Hello everyone, today is an introduction to the virtualization features in chapter 5. After the previous chapters of study, I believe that you have a certain understanding of cloud computing virtualization and virtualization resources, such as network resources and storage resources. So, why do we use virtualization and what benefits that virtualization can bring to us? There are two goals in this chapter. The first one, we need to understand the virtualization features. The second one, we need to be familiar with the scenario corresponding to this virtualization feature. Now, all walks of life have basically had a relationship with cloud computing. Some are in the era of cloud computing 1.0, some have already completed 2.0 era, and some are planning the 3.0 era. No matter which era, Everyone basically started from virtualization. Why do people choose virtualization in the same way? What are the characteristics of virtualization? First, let's take a look at the characteristics of this virtualization from the perspective of cluster. First of all, let's talk about what is a cluster. Cluster is a relatively new technology. Remember the development history of the calculation we talked about earlier. They are serial computing, parallel computing, cloud computing, and then grid computing and distributed computing. From the concept and the purpose of cluster, it belongs to a grid computing. Everyone put their own resources, such as servers, to provide computing resources. The switch provides the network resources, like storage device will provide the storage resources and each of them puts their own resources together, forming a logically very powerful computer, which provides hardware resources to the app layer. The app layer application is in virtualization or cloud computing. It refers to the cloud operating system or the virtualization solution. Cloud operating systems are also good virtualization solutions. What are the benefits of running on a cluster? Comparing with running on a single server, what is its advantage? Let's take a look one by one. First, let's take a look at this diagram. In this cluster, we now have four servers, two switches, and then three storage devices. If one of the servers fails, it can't start, or it cannot run, and then the virtual machine running on it automatically migrates to other servers that are running properly. This function is called HA. HA is called high available. In the whole process, everyone looked at the smell in my up left corner. This smell has not changed. What does this mean? That is, the customer is not aware of the whole process. That is, he does not feel that there is a server failed. How does this happen? In our lab manual, there is a test about this feature. After a virtual machine is hung up, during the migration process, when you pin this network address on the user side, you will find two or three up to five packages loose. This lost five packages on the network, it will regard it as a jitter, and there will be an automatic verification of such a function at the application level. Therefore, the user is not aware of the whole migration process. As long as it comes to clustering, HA is basically inherent in cluster. Whether it is a virtualized cluster or a cluster in our big data or others, HA is inherent in cluster. Let's take a look at the second feature of the cluster. Let's look at the same cluster in this map. We find that there are more virtual machines running on one host. At this time, the virtualization software will automatically discover that this server has a large load. It will automatically migrate some virtual machines running on this host to some servers with lower load. The load within this host reaches a level of equilibrium. This feature is called load balancing. From the user's point of view, if the host of a certain one has a heavy burden, 
it will feel a lag when using this virtual at the customer level. So, load balancing can solve this problem and improve customers' experience. On the other hand, load balancing can increase the life of this hardware. Load balancing prevents some servers from running at high loads while others are running at lower loads. Avoid premature damage to servers that are always running at high loads. So be sure to use clusters to deploy your own applications. Load balancing is, like HA, a basic feature of cluster. Let's take a look at the third features of the cluster. As we mentioned before, one of the characteristics of cloud computing is resource pooling. Virtualization is also the same. It will transform the hardware resource into a virtual resource pool and then shield the underlying hardware differences. The resources in these virtual resource pools are used for distribution and they will be allocated to these virtual machines. Some virtual machines will be used to release these resources when they are used up and most of its virtual resources are always used. This resource will always be occupied and will not be released. This will result in fewer and fewer resources in virtual resource pool. If a new application is going online, it's possible that resources in the virtual resource pool will not be enough. There are two things in the IT industry that are most troublesome. One is cut over and the other is expansion. Either cut over or expansion, it may be caused by insufficient resources at the bottom. So what if we have a cluster? At this time, we only need to expand our virtual resource pool. So we only need to expand our hardware resources and then convert the hardware resources into new resources in this virtual resource pool. We do not need to cut over, no need to expand capacity, just need to manually add this hardware resource in that cluster. It will automatically generate virtual resources and then put it into this virtual resource pool for other applications without any impact on other applications or programs. This feature is called easy scalability. Next, we look at the fourth feature of a virtualized cluster. We looked from left to right. The leftmost hypervisor column, hypervisor, we talked about before. It is a virtualization solution or a core of virtualization technology. Its main role is to allocate CPU resources, allocate memory resources, and so on. When hypervisor allocates memory resources, it sometimes finds a piece of physical memory. Many virtual machines will come here to fetch data. When mapping, hypervisor will map this piece of physical memories to different virtual machines. And then let each virtual machine feel that it has 2G of memory. In fact, the real virtual memory of hypervisor itself has only 4G. This technology is called memory sharing which means that different virtual machines share the same piece of physical memory. Let's look at the middle column again. Every virtual machine gets 2G of this virtual memory. When some virtual machines are running with high load, its memory can be very high, reaching 70 to 80%, even 90%. However, some virtual machines have fewer load or the requirements for this resource are not high, and the utilization of this memory is lower. At this time, the virtual machine will take out part of the memory of the lower utility virtual machine and allocate it to the virtual machine that really needs more memory. This is called memory ballooning, which means that some of the unused bubbles in the memory are squeezed out and distributed to the virtual machines that need more memory. Next, let's take a look at the last column. Before we talk about the last column, we will share two experiences. It's possible that everyone has experienced it. The first one is to have a partition when installing the Linux operating system. 
you should set it as a swap partition. We will set it to twice this space of memory. Do you know what this swap partition is for? The second experience is under the Windows operating system. Sometimes when we run a program, we will pop up and pop up windows to report error, saying that the virtual memory space is insufficient. Please release this space. What causes this error? How to solve this error? First, let's talk about the swap partition. Swap partition is used to store some data in memory. That is, when your computer's memory is insufficient, it will temporarily put the data in this memory in the swap partition. This is the role of the swap area. The Windows arrow is also because Windows wants to put some memory data on the hard disk. When the C drive space is used up, then there's no way to accept this data from memory. It will report this arrow. When you empty the C drive, this arrow disappears. The swap partition and this memory cache are a mechanism for optimizing memory usage. This mechanism is also available in our virtualization cluster feature. Come back to the third column. First of all, Virtual Machine 3 has already obtained 2 GB of memory, but some of the data in the memory is not used frequently. At this time, the system will move this data to the storage device. When the system needs it, it transfers this part of the data from the storage to the memory. This is called memory swapping. Memory sharing, memory belonging, plus memory swapping add up to our fourth feature, memory overcommitment. Memory overcommitment can make the sum of the virtual memory of all the virtual machines on a certain host exceed the capacity of the virtual physical memory. Memory overcommitment can improve the utilization of hardware and can reduce, to some extent, customers' investment. But in some cases, memory overcommitment is not recommended because after the memory overcommitment is turned on, the virtual machine is allocated to the memory. It may be smaller than this real physical memory. If application running on the virtual actually needs such memory, this application will be running very slow. In this case, we do not recommend using this feature. Finishing the cluster features, let's look at the characteristics of this virtualization from the perspective of this virtual machine. We talked about the essence of virtualization. It is logicalized physical server into a file or a folder. Each file or folder corresponds to a virtual machine. Then. Can we copy this file or folder to form a new virtual machine? Yes, it does. But there's a problem that we copy the file and folder. But there's a problem that we copy the file and folder. Some information in this virtual machine, personalized information, such as IP address, host name, and mark address, may be as same as the original one. If they are the same, isn't it trouble? In our daily work, if someone in the same LAN has an IP address or host name that matches the same two computers, it will report an error, and then they will not work properly. In virtualization, we have a solution to this problem by preventing running two virtual machines with same personalized information at the same time. So can we let a virtual machine be permanently turned off and not allowed to run. Doesn't this method solve the problem? This is just a bad solution. The better way is to add some personalized information to each virtual machine when it is copied. For example, if I generate the first machine here, I will give it to this virtual machine. Configure a new username, a new hostname with a new ID address generate a new mark, and so on. When the second one is generated, it is also configured into different other information at the time of production. Similarly, when generating the nth virtual machine, I configure it with such information that is 
completely inconsistent with other virtual machines. We call this way as template deployment. We use this virtual machine that is never used to be copied to be called a template. The essence of the template is actually a virtual machine. And then there will be a parameter at the bottom layer is called its template. Of course, when we operate in the web interface, we only need to right click to convert to a template or set it as a template and it will be okay. With template deployment, we can generate virtual machines that are identical except for personalized data. But there is also a situation where we need virtual machines that are exactly the same, including personalized data. But in this case, there is also the same interface between the virtual machines. Let's take this VM1 as an example. First, we need to turn this VM1 off and then generate VM1 as the blueprint. VM2 is also the same if the VM is not enough. We will generate VM3 and then generate VM4 and etc. Including VM1, VM2, VM3 and VM4, they cannot be running if, if two virtual machines are powered on at the same time. This will definitely happen the problem of interference. The model is called virtual machine replication. Both template deployment and virtual machine replication are part of the rapid deployment of virtual machines. This is the end of today's lecture. Thank you.